In this video, I want to talk about Fistful of Frags. If you're watching this video, you probably know me as the guy who made the Doomfist video and have never heard of such a game, but anyone else watching this video will probably know at least a little bit about Fistful of Frags. It's not the best game that I've ever played, nor my favorite, and to my surprise, not even the one that I spent the most hours playing, but it is a game that I think of as special to me. Up front, I want to make a disclaimer that this game is shit and you should not download it because you'll probably not have any fun. However, once upon a time, this game actually was a whole bunkle of fun. One whole, whole bunkle. bunkle. So, Fistful of Frags, let's have a look. Fistful of Frags review retrospective. I hate shit. Fistful of Frags is, unfortunately, an indie source engine Wild West Deathmatch style first person shooter developed by a single Spanish guy called Rebel Yao, who then changed his name to Ariel and then Rebel Y. More on him later. Once upon a time, Fistful of Frags is just a source mod and not a standalone game, but I don't really know exactly what the difference is. And all that I understand from that is that it was completely remade at some point relatively early in development and became a completely different beast to the incredibly obscure original mod, which I never played. It also got listed on Steam through the green light or whatever, and it got its own pages, forums, workshop, that kind of thing. Anyway, shortly after the remake went up on Steam, it got reviewed by Little Bit Shit, a rubbish YouTube channel that doesn't make good content. He's friendly. He isn't, so we'll put him down. There we go. Then some Team Fortress guy, like Star or Jamar or something, made one video. And between these two awful video excrements, the game received the only real publicity it would ever get. As a result of this, the vast majority of players that ever joined a server in Fistful of Frags were members of the nine-year-old army, or purple army, who only made it that far because they saw Jamar play it. Later on, Muzelk, who is another terrible YouTuber, only this time he's Australian, which gives me justified reason to personally hate him, did the exact same thing as if he didn't actually have any interest in the game and only did it for the views, so I bullied him online over it. You might think that I might have been upset at this point, but the plus side was that for about two weeks, the Oceanian servers would receive as many as 10 players at a time during the single peak hour on Friday evening, so it became a little bit possible to actually play the game for a short while. Before I get too much into talking about Fistful of Frags itself, I'm going to take a bit of time to talk about myself first. And if you have a problem with that, then I have two things to say to you. One is that this stuff is kind of important for context later on in the video. And the other one is, FUCK YOU MAKE A BITCH! The other important thing that you need to know about me is that I was the best player that ever graced this game by a staggeringly large margin. And I am not only better in every way than everyone else that ever played this game, but also smarter, better educated, and cooler. I started playing the game in August of 2014 and have little to no recollection of my first experiences with the game. The first thing that I remember is that at a stage when I was already starting to get good at the game and trying to push my high scores further and further above the 1000 mark in 20 minute deathmatch, I encountered a guy by the name of Joe Tastic. I only saw Joe Tastic a handful of times on the Oceania servers, but every time that I did, he would switch to serious mode and beat me out every single time by a couple hundred points or so. It was never fair though, because he never once played out an entire match from start to finish with me in the server at the same time because he was obviously afraid that he would lose to someone with an anime avatar. Yeah. Joe Tastic disappeared from the game, but I retained my vengefulness forever. And shortly after that, I started to get really unhealthily autistic about high scores and gave myself colored ranks on a Google Docs spreadsheet to measure how good I was doing compared with how good I would expect myself to do. I named the lowest tier, under 1000 points, after Joe Tastic in his dishonor. Normally when I start doing something like this, I give up really fast, like when I tried to keep a financing spreadsheet back when I was living on like 40 bucks a week in my second year of university, or when I tried to learn KFO by Animals and Leaders and I was tracking what BPM I was able to play it at at each successive day. But for whatever reason, I stuck out with being an autistic faggot and fistful of frags and as a result got shockingly good. Later on, I would hit my peak of 2,370 points in a 20 minute death match and the second highest score that I ever heard of someone else getting was under 1,700. Since then, the scoring system has changed and there's not really any way to translate the score into the current game, so you'll just have to accept that I set the highest score ever and it can't possibly be beaten by anyone ever. Anyway, back to when I was just starting the spreadsheet, being an absolute idiot, I put an LFT T tag in my name, looking for a team if you don't know, and joined an American server with no idea whether or not this game even had a competitive scene, let alone any other half decent players besides Joe Tastic and myself. So, within one match, I had a guy adding me on Steam and inviting me to what was at the time the best team in competitive fistful of frags, Reverse Gaming. It was led by one of those try-hard TF2 soldier mains that loses in the open division regional tournaments but still tries to act all aloof and doesn't wear any cosmetics or anything, doesn't say anything in chat besides his binds, he's got like an AG4 letter Steam name and a private profile or something. He kept changing his name all the time, but I'm going to refer to him as Coco in this video a little bit. He took the whole Fistful of Frags thing really, really seriously, and it turns out he was actually the guy that made competitive Fistful of Frags in the first place. He set up all the servers, he set up all the configs for competitive play, um, made the first teams, blah blah blah. So I started playing tournaments with these American dudes, and I won every single match that I played except for one where we were fighting against Brazilians with way, way too much ping. And the leader of the team, Coco, absolutely refused to listen to my obviously perfect strategy, and as a result we kept falling for the enemy's traps and lost the match in overtime. 
Funnily enough, that was the only competitive loss that I ever took in Fizzle of Frags, and it's all Coco's fault specifically and nobody else's. He not only ruined my perfect competitive track record, but is also gay. Eventually, the competitive scene became too difficult for everyone to keep track of, and better game modes came out, so I switched to 3v3 setup and I started making my own teams. This is where it gets fun. Since I was at this point already recognized by everyone as the best player ever, I basically had free choice over who was on my team, so I usually picked one actually good player and one oddball because I knew I could carry them no matter what because I was so good. Eventually I started picking Stiggs as my third because he got involved at some point and it was a lot funnier to have someone on my team who was not only a professional shit stirrer that brought any team to their psychological knees but also had a publicly known track record of being one of the very few people in the world who cared enough to actually cheat in the game. But we never got disqualified for whatever reason and we won every single we played by a massive margin because I was so good. Stiggs is actually alright as well. Besides competitive play, I also liked to grind the ranking letters which came out in mid-2016. They were always just a solo affair, nothing to do with teams, which was fine for modes like Shootout and Versus where everyone is your enemy. But it ended up becoming an absolute mess in team play which got ranks because, get this, fighting the objective in team play did not contribute to your rank score on the ladder. Naturally, from that point on, anyone that cared about increasing their rank all of a sudden stopped fighting for objectives in team play and just camped in corners to try and add as many frags as possible while dying as little as possible because that's how you boosted your rank score. People would just buy the sharp snipe rifle and snipe people from inside their fucking spawn and grind the ladder like that. Ariel added a system where the closer you were to the enemy base, the more your rank score would be boosted per frag and vice versa. And then everyone continued to camp in their spawns anyway because if you're at a high rank score then dying just once was never ever worth the rank score loss because there was a diminishing return system where your rank score increased per frag would be multiplied by the ratio of the difference between your current rank score and the guy who killed you or vice versa. For example, if I have a 3000 rank score and I kill someone with 1000, I gain fuck all, but if he frags me, I lose like 60 frags on him's worth of rank score and I've just spent a couple matches never dying to make that back. So team play was an absolute disaster, but I still set a fairly high rank for the highest score. Obviously, my personal best is the best ever because I'm better than everyone else. But the system made a lot more sense in shootout because there was no way you could guarantee dying besides being good. I thrashed the rankings there and ended up at a point where I had to make roughly 67 killstreaks every single life with some of the weakest weapons of the game just to maintain my rank score because the rank game for frag is also multiplied by how shit your gun is perceived to be by the developer. Anyway, long story short, I was good and absolutely thrashed the shootout rank scores. Versus on the other hand was a little bit more interesting. Versus is a game mode where you're placed in a small, sometimes symmetrical and sometimes asymmetrical arena and play a best of two minimatch against another player with some set of weapons. For example, you might spawn with a navy and there's some asymmetrical cover in the middle, or you might have one player on some brick wall planks with a bow versus a guy on a nearby shore with a dynamite belt. Or you might each have a bow with a campfire in the middle that ignites the arrows shot through it for extra damage, something like that. Anyway, there was never ever a server for this mode in my own region and back then the only truly active one was in Europe, so I almost always played at this mode at over 300 ping. Luckily for me, I was the best player ever, so I could do with it anyway and I pushed myself all the way up to 6485 rank score over like a month of straight grinding and it got to the point where I was gaining 3 rank score for a win and losing 105 for a loss against a normal ranked player, 1000 being the starting rank and naturally the medium because the rank is a zero sum game. Just as a side note, Aria once said that rank being a zero sum game was the reason that team play mode could never have objectives to reward your rank score since there was nobody to take away the rank score from that you would have got from playing the objective. Now, if only he was the developer of the game and was able to find some way to change the system to accommodate playing the game it was supposed to be played, that'd be good, but anyway, more on him later. So you know by this point that I'm good at this game, but I've saved the best of my boasting for last. You know how people make those little montages of funny things that people said in video games and post them on Reddit? People tended to call me a hacker a lot because I played better than most hackers. And over the year, many creative and uncreative insults and occasional nuggets of praise came my way and I put them together into one of my own. And here is the finished product. I call it Down in the BM, named after the Yogori song Down in the GM, which I was listening to at one point when I was playing for and I wrote. It goes down to the BM in the chat. I decided to put it at the bottom next to my leet and my Arno faces. Let's have a look. Yasa, use aimbot. Aimbot. Yep, aimbot right there. Yasa, leave you aimbot shit. Yasa, is there a reason why you are alive? I bet your mom so depressed for giving birth to a useless child. Just report. Yasa has a very large foreskin. Yasa can suck his own dick. Yasa fists real good. Lots of lead, lots of battles. Yasa fingers his pee hole to increase his fistful of frag skills. Damn Chinese aimbot. Report, boys. Fuck you, fuck you. Nasik, hexic, Nasik, I hope you have a great tastes awful. Yasa has a huge foreskin on his mum. He's a fucking letdown. Yasa's back. Nisik, Nisser, Nassel, Nassus, Narkis. No, 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 fuck you, can't get a life. You're playing fistful of frags. Anyway, perhaps one day I'll do a dramatic reading of the entire thing, but I hope you enjoy it. It goes down on the BM. Anyway, besides being a good player of the game, I also took the time to do a bunch of other related things. I made a YouTube channel called Nasik that tore away from the one you're watching now in order to focus on solely FOF related content that was made to a 
higher standard. And without the myriad of copyright infringements all over this one, in case they ever got me enough strikes to disappear. Some of the content on that channel is actually really good if you want a more in-depth look at some of the stuff that I was doing in the game at the time. There's tutorials, casting, frag movies, POVs, update coverage, that sort of thing. Besides the YouTube channel that I had, I had a bunch of creations for the game itself as well. I made two maps, one of which is a handbook recreation of another map from another obscure FPS game called Sour Brighton, and the other one is a movement tech practice room with little obstacle courses and text perhaps made for players to learn and practice all of the complex movement tech in the game. I also made some of the first and most popular skins. Some of them got banned because they give you an unfair advantage or some gay shit like that, and one of them got banned because it made Ariel feel insecure about his heterosexuality. I made a speedrun course, one script and a sound mod that overhauled the game sounds with those from Half-Life 1. I tried to make a competitive ladder kind of thing for a 1v1 play and it had its own rules and servers and website and shit, but no one cared, so I stopped. Okay, enough about me, let's talk about Fistle of Frags already. There's something of a pattern that becomes with the players that download this game. They see the game on Steam, or hear about it from a friend, or in most cases, they watch Muzalk's gay ass videos. The game looks appealing from the outside. You can blow up a train with the dynamite and you can rob the golden chest inside. You can catch someone else's dynamite and kick it back at them. You can knock a bow out of someone's hands and throw it off a cliff and then kick them off the cliff. You can have quick draw revolver fights, land dope headshots, make traps with TNT barrels, that sort of thing. So, people come to the game because they want to try the novelty of these goofy mechanics, which is half of what made the game fun. You can check out the Wacky Fox Clips series on this channel if you want to see little compilations of the truly goofy stuff that happened in my time playing. But there was one big problem that every new player would encounter, no matter when they started playing. And this is a problem that played the game from its very inception, which is that it is just obtuse. This game is unreasonably difficult to learn. Not only are the mechanics many, deep and confusing, a lot of them are simply just not documented outside of a small tooltip in the loadout menu that is only available during matches and you guess it only opened if you need to change your loadout. There was also a little tooltip that appeared every time that you died to give you a little hint about how to play the game. Each tip was scripted to appear a few times for every new install of the game and eventually it would go away but nobody read them because they just wanted to respawn and play the damn game. Which was a pain in and of itself because it would change the button you needed to press to skip it every single time you died. I mentioned that I made a script for the game earlier, this script just got rid of those tooltips. Unsurprisingly, this shit is nowhere near enough documentation for anyone to understand how the game worked, and it contributed not only to the terribly low skill level of players, including those who had experience with FPS or even source FPS games ahead of time, but also to their frustration and incentive to give up trying to learn the game. So naturally, people ask questions, people ask in the chat or on the forums, and often got snarky, work it out yourself, answers from cocky faggots who think too highly of the mental resourcefulness of children, or they just got misinformation from other people that thought they knew what was going on but actually didn't have the slightest clue. People tried to make wikis to act as knowledge bases so that people could refer to one easy source and learn about all the stuff. These got updated with incorrect information by people that thought they knew what was going on but didn't actually have the slightest clue. Wiki shit. People that actually knew desperately searched for ways to explain the extremely complex stuff to new players and drew blanks. And to make matters worse, the game got updated all the time, usually for the worse, which would often render information outdated. I tried my best on my NASA YouTube channel but there's only so much work that I could be fucked doing and even I, the only person to ever understand the game's inner workings wasn't able to serve as a comprehensive knowledge base for people that wanted to figure shit out. So the end result of this mess was that everyone fucking sucked at the game except for me. Even people that were relatively good compared to the masses and had the general capabilities and transferable FPS skills to get truly good were invariably turned away by the extraordinary depth and confusionness presented by the more difficult and obscure aspects of the game. For example, Drifting. Drifting is a technique that I discovered that basically makes you faster on the ground and using it is objectively a direct upgrade from not using it and therefore you are obliged to use it all the time to give yourself an advantage. But drifting is difficult to understand, difficult to explain, difficult to learn, difficult to execute, difficult to get used to after never having used it before, and difficult to find a comfortable setup for with your keyboard and mouse amongst the myriad of functions that you need to have at the ready at all times in this game. I play games with a Logitech G600, this mouse here, which has like 20 two buttons in total or something and I swear to god that I used all of them while playing this game and I can't imagine that the pain others must have suffered by not having 12 thumb buttons ready at all times so that their left hand was always on last. I made a tutorial for drifting. I made a room in the MTPR that has a bunch of courses that you can only clear if you do a good drift. I spent a lot of time making that map and translating the blurb into Chinese so that the Chinese players could understand what the hell the red and green pads were about. And you want to know who learned to drift? Nobody. As far as I know, to this day, not a single person besides me can drift, and you can't fucking blame them. They're too busy trying to work out how the fucking bow works, or the handedness system, or the spread system, or bunny hopping, or how to do a full crouch jump bunny hop into this one hole on this one map, which is the only place that the technique is applicable in the whole game. Back to the point. Everyone fucking sucks, but everyone that plays this game is naive, and they think that they are better than others when they discover a couple new tricks, like a child learning a new word and then finding some way to shoehorn it into every conversation that they have for the next week. And as a result, the voice of the community 
thinking is universally wrong about everything. Once upon a time, there was a guy called Nasik who was so kind and benevolent as to take time out of his busy day to correct people's mistakes on the forums and Discord channels and made entire pages of intricate bug reports with video footage of the incident and any leads as to how they might be fixed and taught all the poor netizens how to get better at this game that they really wanted to play and get better at. But I got banned because I was a meanie to the developer and all my posts got deleted forever. Anyway, the point is that nobody in the forums understood the game so Ariel didn't trust them at all and ended up getting more and more rude and uncooperative with the community and quickly find himself antagonized as someone who cared only for his own opinion and didn't listen to the community voice. But you can't blame him on that front. They really were wrong about everything all the time. Nobody understood the balance or the mechanics or anything. Even the really good players with four digit play times didn't really know what was going on. But Ariel was wrong too. Because he is just a stupid guy. There's nothing else to it. He's, he's just a fucking retard. Now before I get into the downfall of Fistful of Rags, I want to take a bit of time to talk about the good shit, the fun that we had, why someone like me who'd done everything from the trailers a million times and played a classroom of 12 year olds combined lifetime share of death matches would bother continuing to play the game. The game was fun, really fucking fun. There's a few things that made it that way. I've said before that half the fun of the game was the novelty of the goofy shit that happened and that's no exaggeration. Sometimes people will make a Twitch clip of something goofy happening in say Overwatch or Counter-Strike. It's cool to see that. Like a hamster ball getting a 6k boop out of a control point. Or a doom for killing a mercy with a meteor strike halfway up a wall. Or a failed run boost or something like that. That stuff is fun. And little moments like that are treasured and they get lots of internet points on a reddit. But in Fistful of Frags, it feels like that shit happens all the time. The first 50 hours in particular that you play are absolutely loaded with hilarious new shit. Eventually, blowing someone up by shooting a TNT barrel isn't something that you do just for laughs anymore because, you know, it loses its edge. But it's still satisfying and it still nets you a frag and a good amount of points to boot. So the game stays silly forever and it's mind-boggling how much fun you can get out of these weird mechanics. After already having like 13, 1400 hours under my belt, I came up with the simple but fantastic idea of Asshole, one of my best videos ever. Go check it out if you have the time. I'll show you a little preview right now. You little fucking snitch. <laughs> Come here, you faggot. Snitch one, Ranger zero. You snows, you lows. Anyway, besides all the funny shit that you can do in this game to pass the time, there's also, get this, some actual meat to the gameplay. Froth gets compared a lot to Counter-Strike, which is a pretty fair comparison, I think, because it's probably the most similar game to it as far as feel and gunplay goes. The big difference is that the guns in CS are good and the guns in Foff are awful. That's not a mistake, mind you, the guns are awful by design. The idea is that the guns are really slow but powerful for the sake of both semi-historical accuracy and trying to stand out from the arena FPS crowd. So the guns are slow, there's a lot of them, a bunch of weird perks that you can use to change your gameplay setup, and a hand in the system that changes the way the accuracy works depending on how many guns you're holding and in which hand. But the main thing that made the Fistful of Frags gameplay and gunplay truly worth playing is the sheer depth and breadth of the mechanics available. By absolute mistake on the developer's part, this bird's nest of shitty duct tape code that keeps the game together somehow how brings the skill ceiling off of higher than it ever deserved to be, and maybe it shouldn't have been that high. Some people that claim to be good at Fistful of Frags will contest me on this and say that it never had a high skill ceiling. These players fucking sucked at Fistful of Frags and don't know what they're talking about, so if you see them down in the comments you can feel free to just ignore them. But because it's a lot of fun, let's take a look at a couple examples inside the game. First up, bunny hops! Bunny hops in Fistful of Frags worked really differently than they do in, say, Quake or CS, but they were there, and especially during the second half of 2017, there was a huge amount of potential to what you could do with the technique. Now, as a viewer of this video, there's a small chance that you don't actually understand what a bunny hop is. Basically, there's an oddity in the Source Engine, for the games that it's not patched out in, where you can hold a strafe key and turn your mouse in the same direction while in the air to make yourself turn in the air. In a few games, including for the little frags, this also increases your speed. When you spend time on the ground, your speed starts to go back down again to where it should be. But if you jump as soon as you hit the ground, then that slowdown doesn't take effect and you get faster and faster 
faster by doing consecutive jumps and wiggling back and forth in the air. This is all well and good. You can move fast, you can reload your guns without being slowed down like you usually would, and you can even shoot at enemies with the rifles that don't get a terribly large accuracy penalty when you fire them in mid-air. But here's the catch. Since you have to be moving your mouse in sync with the airstrike movements, you don't really have the luxury of aiming at the enemies while doing your funny bunny hop zigzags. If your mouse movements and your keyboard movements desynchronize with each other, then you start to lose speed because you're not doing the technique correctly anymore. However, the airstrike technique technically isn't restricted to the strafe keys. It's not the keys that make this work. It's trying to move at an angle perpendicular to the direction that you're actually moving in the air. Therefore, if you were to jump sideways, you could use the W and S keys to bunny hop sideways. You could do it backwards. You could even do it diagonally by mixing the keys together. This way, you now have eight directions that you can choose from while you do your bunny hop line in any given direction and the challenge is in finding your enemy, deciding which angle you should be bunny hopping at, starting that line, pulling off the technique, and then subsequently aiming at your opponent in as little time as possible and deviating as little from your perfect sync as possible so that you don't lose the speed and have to start all over again. Now if you're epic, like me, and good at first follow frags, you can pull this off correctly maybe like three or four times in your entire life outside of the standard fours bunny hopping. But if you're even better, you might actually be able to get good at this technique. Obviously nobody ever did that. The fucking losers who play this game can't even be bothered learning to drift. So what's gonna convince them to do these multi-directional airstrafe bunny hops? Hmm, they're not gonna do it. Case in point is that Fistle of Frags is hard and deceptively so, to a point that it's most likely that the developer was never even aware that this was possible or that his own game had so much depth to it. Mind you, this is just one example. So fuck it, let's take another. Daringer cocking. This time I've already done a write up on it and I've forgotten how it all works. So let me just read it to you off the page. I'm gonna speed this up because fuck it's boring. <laughs> Okay, let's have a look. Advanced Derringer use, animation cancels, and more. This guide explains the lesser known intricacies of the Derringer and how cocking works. It includes ground level information about cocking, animation cancelling, running animations simultaneously to save time, and how to apply these skills in game. Wow, fascinating. Let's have a look. Cocking and animation cancel basics. Alright, let's talk about cocking. You may or may not already know that there are four guns in this game that need to be cocked up to every shot before they can be fired again. These are the yellow voice pins, the pump shotgun, and Derringer. But the Derringer is the Albanati because it's a handgun while the other three are two handed weapons. And along with that comes a bunch of little intricacies and bugs that we can use to our advantage, and that's what this guide is all about. As you can see, you have to wait for the cocking animation after each shot when firing. There's a way to skip it, but I'll talk about that later. For now, I just want to make it clear that the cocking animation is there. It takes time, and you can't do anything with the weapons in your hand while it's happening. That means you can't shoot a gun in your opposite hand, you can't shoot a daring that's being cocked, and you can't cock with a daring. Oh, you can still kick, put guns away, and throw or drop guns. The next thing you should know about cocking is that switching to another weapon does not make it so that you don't need to cock a daring. In other words, if you shoot and then quickly swap to another weapon, you'll need to cock it the next time you drop before it will let you shoot. Even if you drop the gun and pick it again, you'll still need to cock it. And if you pick up someone else's uncocked daring, that one needs to be cocked too. The state of the daring is saved when it drops to the ground. Funnily enough, it also says which hand it's supposed to slot into, but that's a very broken and complicated topic for another day. And of course, if you're firing two daring, then both of them need to cock individually. After you shoot one, there's a period of time between the end of the natural shooting cooldown you get when firing with two hands drawn. And beginning with the cock animation on the daring that you fire. That means you can fire the other daring during that time, but not after or before, because you can stop to either by the first during a cocking or the firing cooldown. So here's an example of me doing just that, which is the normal mode of firing daring is shoot, shoot, cock, cock, shoot, shoot, cock, cock, reload, reload. Building on this, you probably know that you don't have to make an individual click for every shot that you fire in this game. You can simply buffer it by holding on the fire key and wait for your cooldown to end and it'll shoot as soon as possible. Buffering on the daring is a good way to shave time if your tracking aim is good enough to keep your shots on target, but you need to be careful here. Here's an example of some awkward daring buffing where I buffer right, left, right, left. You can see that the first two shots happen as expected, but there's a delay between the third and fourth. That's because since I buffer the first right daring after I've already cocked the right daring and fired the right one, the shot happens before the left daring gets cocked. So instead of shoot, shoot, cock, cock, shoot, shoot, cock, cock. I'm now doing shoot, shoot, cock, shoot, cock, shoot, cock, cock. There are three ways around this problem. Get used to it and track with the uneven rhythm. Begin buffering the third shot only after the second cocking animation begins. Or fire right, left, left, right instead of right, left, right, left, left, right, right, left. Works too, but it's situationally worse for reasons I'll explain later. Anyway, it goes on and on and on. I think this joke's run on long enough. So if you want to have a look at during your animation cancels, then fucking here's the guide. But fuck me, dude. I think points made. Okay, now obviously that daring thing is outside the range of the fun of most players, but I just wanted to make the point that the skill ceiling of this game is really, really high, and there's a huge amount of gameplay depth to be explored that will keep you consistently challenged no matter how much time you spend in the game. I'm probably in the top 10 ranking of Fistful of Frags players by playtime, and I never even learned how to use the bow to good effect. Mind you, the bow fucking sucks, so I can't be blamed for it, but the point stands. Oh, and the maps had so much depth to them that I ended up making almost three hours worth of YouTube content showcasing tips and tricks on the maps in the game, but only the deathmatch map pool and not including the 12 slot deathmatch maps and I missed a lot of stuff as well. Besides the game itself being fun, naturally the game came with a bunch of funny cunts on the servers. That sort of thing happens with any game. CS has it, Overwatch has it, Gmod has it, Rust has it, TF2 sort of has it. Honestly, TF2 players aren't very funny, but you get my point. FOF has its fair share of funny cunts like any other online game. The people that stuck around in the community and logged onto the local servers every day were of course the most mundane assholes imaginable, but every now and then some guy would come on and pretend to call me out for a hacking in fake Tongan. My low toe low ESP hacks, wool hacks, my low low trainer hacks, you my low. Or call on to everyone to kill the Chinese or something like that. Kill the Chinese! Kill the Chinese! Anyway, a lot of wacky dudes made their way into FOF over the years, so good on them. Godspeed. 
Okay, so I mentioned Ariel a couple of those times in this video, and I think I've already got the point across to some extent that he's a weird cunt that doesn't really know how to make or maintain a game. I have a few little anecdotes regarding Ariel that serve as a nice little insight into the mind of a madman, so let's jump down the, the rabbit hole. First up is a brief one, the day of the bug reports. As a good and pure-hearted citizen of the Solar Frags, I liked to make reports of bugs that I found in the game. One day I posted like 15 all at once because I had a bunch piled up that I hadn't gone around to reporting, and it was enough that the entire page of the bug reports forum was filled up completely by my posts that I made that evening. Ariel decided to delete the posts and give me a temporary ban for uh, including one from a thread that had been deleted ahead of time. Not a good sign. Next anecdote is a bit more visible in the community eye. A guy made a review for the game on Steam one day. Pretty standard affair for a review from a disgruntled old fag just complained about how the game has generally gone downhill for the usual reasons that people cite. Now this was a few while back. The game was better back then than it is now, but I think that almost anyone would agree that he wasn't wrong in calling out the game as being a shadow of its former self at the time of the review. Anyway, the review was pretty normal, just a constructive, reasonable, negative review, but oh my goodness, this man made a big, big mistake. He made a bit of a snag at Ariel's attitude at the end of the review, and Ariel doesn't take kindly to snags. So he flagged the review as abusive, called him out on hatred, and made a big fucking fool of himself. Everyone in the comments sided with the guy that wrote the review, and so was left another big skid mark in Ariel's shit-filled diaper of a reputation. And there was another review prior to this one that had more of the same content, and Ariel absolutely went off the deep end in the comments. He was spamming the same little line about the alleged lie in the review that Ariel has a habit of banning players that he gets owned by while playing the game and accusing them of cheating, made an even bigger fucking fool of himself. I can't find this review or the account that made it anymore, so I'm assuming it's all been taken down now, but luckily, I still have this gold nugget of Ariel history. Fascinating guy. Mind you, that little bit about Ariel falsely banning players for supposedly cheating is entirely true. There's a few examples around, but here's a particularly juicy one from not too long ago where a guy complained that he got banned from the game for supposedly hacking. And Ariel responds with a fucking public YouTube video of a demo where he was spectating this dude. You wanna know what's great about this? The motherfucker isn't cheating. It's such a mundane clip with absolutely nothing suspicious at all. Naturally, people called out Ariel over this and he took to the hackers reporting thread on the forums and said this, and I quote, Here's the full demo I recorded. Isn't very long, but it's interesting once you watch it knowing what a wall hacker would actually see. Even people trained to use a wall hack the most unnoticeable possible way fails sometimes. Anyway, this is just a bunch of coincidences and weird stuff that prove nothing, sure, and I couldn't really care less if someone wastes their time cheating at a free game like this. Or not. What the fuck does that even mean? Is this sarcasm or is he like come to his senses a little bit and he's just trying to hide it? And last, I removed the ban, not because I think it isn't right, but because he'll do the same if he wants to. I just wanted to bring attention to what I consider is a big farce, this one and other similar cases. Next hacker report. Bans were added, thank you. Obviously the whole thing is just damage control cover up because he realizes he's wrong, but jeez. Absolutely fascinating that this guy is so damn stubborn on it and not only did he not take down the video, but he didn't even fucking make it unlisted or private even after he just recently took down a bunch of his old videos from his channel and made his liked videos playlist private. Which is a crying shame because he actually liked my asshole video. That's neat. Anyway, let's have a look at the next one. Fascinating. Another time he made a big stink about my HUD that was giving me this dope pilot crosshair that's spread across the screen with these transparent lines. It looks obtrusive when you look at it like this, but when you're actually playing the game you don't really notice it. It does wonders for your subconscious when you're gonna make a cool flick off to the side or something. The reason I made this is because the crosshairs in the game fucking suck. You can't really customize them at all to any meaningful extent, and they're rendered as little polygons in front of the camera instead of 2D images or vectors drawn to the screen like the rest of the HUD. They scale terribly, they're ugly, they move a lot, overall it's just a big shit show and I don't like them. So, I went and I made a HUD mainly just to give myself a good old fashioned instead of cross here. Then I checked in my fancy pilot wings and messed around with the font and layout for good measure. For a while this was fine, but at some point Ariel pushed an update to ban custom HUDs because it's cheating! And I point out that a good way to cheat in this game would be to edit the material files of the textures in the game to make them transparent so that you can wall hack natively in the game with just a texture mod. He realized that that was cheating and locked the material files. <laughs> Probably a missed opportunity to be honest, but whatever. Anyway, the guy's a fucking fool and thought that disabling custom huts was gonna stop me from having my crosshair. So I drew a crosshair on a bit of clear tape and put it in the middle of my screen. Obviously a goof, but I think he got upset. Afterwards, I downloaded a software to draw a crosshair to my screen and showed him and said, hey buddy, could you maybe like unban huts because the advantage that they give you can just be obtained like this anyway. And to be honest, I quite enjoyed my funky little layout and the font, you know, the other parts of the HUD that are like completely harmless. He told me that I was cheating. All right, what else we got? Ooh. That's a fucking goof. <laughs> oh my goodness. What a guy. 
One time he got upset that Stiggs was playing the game but he didn't have any explicit proof that Stiggs was cheating so he started doing this thing where every time a player in the top 100 global ranks got a kill streak over like 8 or something, the game would start automatically taking screenshots of its stuff at certain intervals and upload those to a private workshop listing that only Aryal, not even the player in question, could view. However, the link to this would still turn up in your My Workshop Items page when you checked it out on your end, so we could all see that we were secretly being watched. Of course, Diggs wasn't actually cheating at the time, but one way or another some events transpired, I think he's like lag, lag switched or something like that. There ended up being an update push to the game that would execute some broken code that would crash your game on purpose if you were to play first for the frags on Stig's Steam account. Absolute classic. Oh yeah, and one more. Um, I actually have a video of this and it doesn't really beg explanation so I'll just, I'll just play you the whole thing. It's short, don't worry. So the story here is that I was playing on the European Versus server because as I said before, it's the only active one at the time and I fucking owned him. And he decided that high ping is an advantage in the game, which he would know it's not if he ever played on servers in other regions. So he added the ping limit so that I wouldn't be able to disrupt his little safe space in the European Versus servers. <laughs> All right, that's probably enough about our Lord and Savior. Let's move on to the good stuff. And by good stuff, I mean bad stuff because it's time to talk about the game becoming shit. I've alluded to this for long enough, time to actually get into the nitty gritty and talk about some of the shit that has run this game down and out. Here we go! I mentioned before that there's a pattern where IR doesn't trust the community because the game is too hard to understand and therefore they don't understand the game and are wrong and he gets frustrated and doesn't listen to the community voice and therefore gets antagonized. Basically the run-on effect of this is that the root cause of everything bad in the game is that he basically finds himself immune to criticism because of this. And naturally it does not help that Ariel himself does not really understand the game or its balance to begin with and seriously, seriously needs help from others to make the game fun. Functional, but he's a one-man dev and the only help that he accepts from others is content contributions like maps and models. For example, he does do mapping himself but a lot of the maps in the game are made by other people. But as soon as the map gets in the game, he won't listen to a word that the original developer says and will go ahead and make all sorts of weird changes on his own accord almost invariably to the original mapper's discontent. Rezi, the most prominent mapper, has expressed frustrations over how maps like Dippo, Coastal and Station got totally butchered by Aryal over the years and turned into very, very different and overall much worse maps than they used to be. Some of these changes even go unmentioned in the patch notes. Like in Depo, there used to be a door under a staircase that you apparently couldn't open, but if you push the use key on it like 50 times in a row, it would open up and there's a secret super whiskey bottle hidden inside that restores all of your health if you drink it. Now that got patched up without a mention in the update notes one day and we had to find out for ourselves much later that it was gone. On the topic of maps, it's worth saying that the maps got changed big time over the years. This is a point of contention. The map design philosophy used to be something along the lines of make an interesting unique layout in a fairly believable setting and include some gimmicks or interesting spots and see how they work. Ariel decided to streamline the map floor a lot over the years and started adding weird bridges from place to place, cutting out dead ends and dark corners and making all of the paths in the map kind of flow into each other. You can argue that it's better this way because it makes it harder to camp and hoard chests and encourages players to get into the fray and fight more and you can argue that it's worse because there's less gameplay variety and things that make each map or part of a map unique. Most people agree with the latter but you can take that how you will. The point is that the maps changed and people generally they did not like the changes that happened to the maps. And weapons went down a similar path. The weapon changes are kind of special in Fistful of Frags. You can look at any other game and you'll see a pattern of things getting buffed when they're too weak and things getting nerfed when they're too strong, as you'd expect. But this one of Frags just kind of doesn't have buffs, only nerfs. There used to be buffs back in like March 2014 when the game first came out. There were buffs and nerfs all the time. But I suppose Aryo's design philosophy changed and all of the weapons just slowly got worse and worse over time. The balance was never that bad. Sure, there were a couple nightmare updates, but anyway, most of the time the balance was pretty good. But all of the guns were getting worse alongside each other, so no matter what your favorite was, it was always getting less powerful. Nobody likes having a shit that they like nerfed, but it felt like every month you lost a bit more of your power in the game. Everything slowed down, it got clunkier, and got harder to kill people. And I especially feel for the people that liked the dynamite, because it just got worse and worse and worse and worse. I bet you that dynamite nerfs alone account for hundreds of people that stopped playing this game altogether. I reckon a couple hundred people stopped playing 
because they're sick of the dynamite getting nerfed, I swear to God. Anyway, all of these nerfs kind of culminated into a big climax at the end of last year. A bunch of updates came out in quick succession and a whole bunch of stuff got completely reworked. Most importantly, the movement and the handguns got hugely nerfed. The way that the accuracy of your handgun would change when you jump and walk got reworked and the nerf was so confusing on both a how does this work level and also a what the fuck is a developer thinking level that these people started posting fucking bug reports because they couldn't comprehend what was going on. And I feel so sorry for these poor souls, like that's just what Ariel wanted for the game, it's that weird. And for those that don't know about this update, let me get you up to speed. Basically, first of all the frag is a system a bit like CS, where if you're running, your guns are inaccurate, but if you stop, they're accurate. However, the transition from inaccurate to accurate when you stop moving is really, really long in Fistful of Frags, unlike CS where you can just tap the opposite direction and be ready to fire pretty much instantly. Instead of having that, in Fistful of Frags, there's a walk function where you can move slower than running, but still fire reasonably accurately. It's not as good as standing still, but it's pretty close to it. And since the accuracy transitions smoothly, you only need to hold the walk button for as long as you need for the accuracy to be good enough for the range that you're fighting at. Now that means that up close, you're pushing the walkie less, so handgun fights are faster paced, they're exciting, full of danger between these on the run headshots that you're doing, like kicking people into fences and whatever, and then at long range it slows down and becomes a contest of raw aim and jukes. So, what this update changed then is that when you press the walkie, your accuracy will be locked at 1% for a short period of time and then it will start to transition to the high accuracy level after you've been unable to fire against your opponent that's running at you with an actual shotgun for a good second or two already. But the higher accuracy level is not only lower across the board now, but also completely broken across the four new handedness modes where right handed is the only one that's viable because it not only has a new sharpshooter firing mode that is essentially the old walking function but a little bit worse, but is also objectively better in every way than ambidextrous because you get more accurate accuracy in your left hand while dual wielding in right handed mode than you do when you dual wield in fucking ambidextrous mode. Dude, how the fuck are you supposed to play this game anymore? Oh, and if you reload it fucks up your accuracy as well. Or if you tap the walkie and then don't walk but maybe stop or use sharpshooter or something, you're just stuck at 1%, you fucking lose. You can't use the sharpshooter in the air either because that will fuck up your accuracy when you land as well. And sometimes it just happens anyway and who fucking knows why. But to be safe, you're gonna want to start pressing the right mouse button when you hit the ground, just like you have to press the space bar on the same tick that you had touched the ground, because he added a fucking jumps buffer where if you press jump while in the air, you can't jump for a couple seconds because he doesn't want people to bunny hop using the scroll wheel. All right, let's switch topics to bunny hopping. I touched on it a little bit before, but here's a bit more story to this. Bunny hopping used to be sort of a thing, and Ariel Band-Aid patched it out without really understanding what he was doing. And then it kind of came back in 2017, and then ended up getting inexplicably buffed to the point that it was literally better than running on the ground all the time. Ariel thought that bunny hopping wasn't appropriate for the game at first, and then he decided that it was for whatever reason, but he thought that the new system was too easy to pull off. So instead of reverting it to the difficult time back in 2015-2016 when you sort of bunny hop, but not really, and it was kind of hard, the motherfucker adds this jump buffer that I mentioned before to force people to bunny hop by timing jumps with the spacebar. Mind you, this guy could have counted all of the people that were even able to bunny hop properly before the update on his fingers and toes, but he decided that now nah, we gotta erase the skill ceiling on movement by patching out crap jumps, surf, climb, slope hops, prop jumps, and train jumps, and making us bunny hop with the fucking spacebar. Dude. There's a guy in Europe who's so good at the game now that he can actually pull it off. Look at this clip. Have a look at this. Motherfucker is bunny hopping with the space bar for real. Like, man, I think that you might be greener pastures and like salaries and shit if you play a game with a bit more of a developed esports scene. Maybe you could play uh, Counter Strike and, uh, yeah. Maybe this is the right place for you, bro. Anyway, skill ceiling. I mentioned before as well, it's so fucking scuffed, man. Ariel does all this to bunny hopping because he wants to raise the skill ceiling on movement. But as I just said, he patched out half the difficult shit anyway, and nerfed jumping itself so much that half the routes in the game that required movement to pull off are just not possible anymore. And he makes this goofy ass change to the handguns that lowers the skill ceiling farther than it's ever gone down before. You basically have to stand still or close to it for a good amount of time to be able to shoot accurately if you're using a handgun. And this doesn't actually really apply to the sort of shotgun or any of the two-handed weapons, which also got buffed because you can't disarm players holding them anymore, so now the two-handed weapons are disproportionately massively overpowered in comparison to the handguns, especially the Spencer Carbine, which was already the best gun in the game before the update, and now its counterpart, the Yellow Boy, which used to stand up to it in terms of balance, got nerfed into the ground. It's a fucking starter weapon now. Oh, and there was an update that made it so that you can't animate 
animation came to the suspensive carbine while it's in the last part of the reload cycle. You used to save time here because the draw animation was faster, but if you do it after the last shot is loaded but before the animation begins, you can do it anyway. There's just like a tiny window of time where you can pull it off. And it only applies if you're doing it for the very last shot that you're loading into the gun anyway. And the draw animation is also faster than the cocking animation, so you do this every single time that you fire anyway. It's fucking polished game, my bros. I love it. Double kicks lower the skill ceiling too. Alright, so hopefully you get the gist now that the game has been on a down spiral for ages. I don't want to leave you with such a small amount of examples compared to how much mega bullshit there is actually out there. So I'm going to dig out an old video idea that I had for the Fistful of Frags Updates Hall of Shame, where I would go through the top 10 worst updates that this game ever got. I'll keep it short and concise because most of this shit really isn't worth getting into too deeply right now. <laughs> Stuff is this one, 21st of August 2017. It doesn't actually say anything about it in the patch notes, but basically there was a speed limit added. If you went over 350 units per second after this update, you'd get stopped dead in your tracks. So it basically broke any fun custom map with like a bounce pad or like a horse that kicks you off a cliff or whatever. You can't jump off trains anymore because they're moving faster than that and it used to break Fucking no clip. You couldn't no clip because this update came out. Naturally, it was really bugged in general and not calibrated right, and most of the shit never got fixed anyway, and so everyone had to learn all kinds of fucked up different workarounds. Some of that shit's still in the game to this day. Next up's the old walking update. Basically, walking was good and then it was worse. This was by far the buggiest update ever. I said before that one time I posted so many bugs that it filled up an entire page of the forums. Well, most of those bugs were related to how this would break your accuracy. Nest removal. Resi made a dope map called Nest, and it was in the game for like a week. And got taken out and replaced with a GIMP's 12 slot version of itself and the full version was put into holding until Ayo could gut it enough so that he would be happy with the layout and happy to push it live. And uh, he never did. So that was the end of Nest. Uh, great job Brazy, I hope you enjoyed spending your time making that map. That's it. New Robert Lee. The old Robert Lee map set you on a boat with a cool dog next to it. Probably the most popular map of its time and rightfully so. Fucking fun map, dude. Basically it got remade and the remake wasn't as good. Nobody liked it. The iconic bar area at the bottom was gone and that was like everyone's favorite spot of the whole game. Bond! Fuck me, dude. Nothing I can say about this one. Watch the video. Ping Limit. I mentioned that one before. What a fucking spectacular idea. A game that gets like 200 concurrent players on a good day. Let's make it so that the players in the farther out areas get automatically kicked from servers because they don't live in the USA or Europe. Classes. Team play mode used to have the same money system as Breakfair where you make loadouts at a price based on what's in them. Mind you, this system is yet another strong contender for most confusing and broken thing in the game. But anyway, it got replaced with a scuffed class selection screen. If you don't pick a class within like two seconds of spawning, it goes away and you just get nothing. And I really don't understand what the thought process behind half of these classes is to begin with and obviously there's no fucking way you can balance this shit for competitive play or whatever right? Coco, being the only guy who brown nosed enough with Ariel to get his voice heard, was unsurprisingly a vocal supporter of this and wanted to give it a shot in competitive because he's a fucking retard. So it stayed like dude, what is this shit? Oh man, bow volcanic knives. We've got a weapon that is designed to work at all ranges, a sidearm that you don't need because the bow has unlimited ammo, and knives. I don't get it, dude. Team Play servers took a noticeable player count dip after this one. Hmm. Turbo physics. Basically, you used to be able to move around the props in the game and stand on them, knock them around, that kind of shit. But there was a bug where if you spawned them incorrectly on a custom map, it would lag the server. Instead of fixing the bug or even not giving a damn, Ariel put a thing called Turbo physics into the game, which basically broke the collision detection for all props and prevented you from standing on them by making you kind of fall into them and then they would sort of get pushed out of you. But you couldn't move while a prop was on you and a prop couldn't be destroyed while a player was holding it. So I started griefing the game by picking up these props and holding them inside my teammates and trapping them. It's best if it's an explosive barrel because then their only escape is to blow themselves up. Hilarious. I made asshole two out of this absolute banger of a video. Anyway, the other thing was bugging and shit. Money chests. In the shootout mode, you used to get guns by going to a box and opening the box and choosing a weapon. Ariel decided that this was too fair or something, so he decided to make it so that you have money that slowly increases over time and can be spent on stuff inside the boxes when you open them and the items are priced accordingly. As you can imagine, it was not only super convoluted and terribly balanced, but also buggy. It's still buggy to this day. Even if you run away from it, it stays open and fucking it's, it covers the whole fucking screen. Anyway, last one. April 2016 Mayhem. Not much to say about it, I mentioned it before. Mayor's leg was overpowered. Dynamite Bell was fucked from the inside out. The double dare in this, which were a fan 
forever got nerfed and also you couldn't fucking get in pairs anymore just one at a time and the very shitty gentleman perk got its balance ruined even more than it was ahead of time and fuck, I don't know there's probably some bugs or something anyway that's the top 10 shitty fistful of frags updates most of the community is just apathetic at this point to be honest because you can't just report these bugs and stuff and have them fixed because Arya will either ignore it or claim you don't know what you're talking about you can't complain about the updates themselves because he'll just delete your comments and fucking ban you so only the degenerate masochist pigs of the community still remain because it's such an absolute struggle trying to enjoy this game as it gets worse and worse and worse over the years and there's quite seriously nothing any of us can do about it so Shall we take a look at some of these piggies? Some snorters, some autistic goofballs. Yes, we shall. Fuff community in 2019. All right, so the Fuff community has always been a conglomerate of some real goofballs. Most games are big enough that the community is like diluted because there's so many computers and the weirdos become the odd ones out because they're mainstream games, right? Each game's community also has its own overall style that makes it stand out from the rest, right? So like, for example, League players are jaded and toxic. CS players are stuck up and competitive. TF2 players are lonely furries. Overwatch players sell nudes and piss on their premium Snapchat accounts and complain about Twitch emojis. But Fistful of Frags doesn't have enough players for the community to have a real identity. For example, we only ever had one real meme, which is past the whiskey. Most players only stick around for a couple months and are really young, so there's not really a lot of staying power per human being. I've been dabbling in the community again to see how it's faring in 2019, and well, the results are pretty special. Really, there's only two people that I actually want to bother talking about right now. I think that these guys are like particularly entertaining to have a little look at, to get a little glimpse of what it's like to be a member of the Fistful of Frags community. So without further ado, let's, um, Let's cyberbully some troubled children. So first up is this guy. As you can see, he's um, doing a little dance to a honey, honey, you can. while in a Zoro costume. This guy's been role-playing and sometimes even LARPing as Zoro for like five years straight now. He hardly ever breaks character as well. He brands himself as like a champion of justice in the community and he stands up for the little guys against the evil toxic bullies. Like the bully hunters, but um, spectral. He doesn't like me because I poked fun at him, so he kind of antagonized me in the same sort of way that Christian West and Chandler antagonized people that made fun of him in real life. There's no Zoro comics unfortunately, but maybe I'm represented by some character in his Zoro fan fictions or something like that. I'd be really flattered if I was. Zoro, if you're watching, please make me a villain in your Zara thing, that'd be, that'd be dope. Call him Nessic. I mean it too, Nessic. You do not deserve to live on this earth. Who's Nessic? But it's a love-hate relationship, to be honest, because Zara, he is a horny young lad, and he quite appreciates my looks. Wouldn't want him to get too far ahead of himself, though, because he um, had a bit of a mommy crush on the one female player from his continent. Big shame that that fell through. I'm Zoro. Gugu Gaga. I'm a dumb buck. So you might think that this is pretty goofy and you'd be very, very right, but what's most fascinating about this is that there's fucking six of them! Not one, not two, there are six Zoros that have existed at different times over Fistful of Frags history. Fucking everyone knows about the Zoros, they're like as famous as I am. Basically what Zoro does is he takes on apprentices. He trains them in morality and teaches them to use a specific loadout in Fistful of Frags and other games. And in Fistful of Frags they have to only play on the Rangers team with the Zoro face mask mod and leave the mask of Zoro in the chat when they get a kill using their swords. That's the knives or the machete. <laughs> Understandably, most kids think that this sounds cool and they give it a shot and give up after like a week, which is probably why second through fifth Zoros appear to be missing right now. Uh, at the time of recording, Zoros 1 and 6 are in business, so I don't know much about numbers 3, 4, and 5, but I do have this screenshot of when Zoro 2 flipped his toys and disappeared forever. Ariel never bought a license to the Source Engine, so it's illegal for him to make money off the game. And that's the end of the story. A very poor choice to name a game. End of story indeed. Why are people so up in arms against someone wanting to create a project for something that they love as though it was their own child? To watch it grow and prosper. That is why Fistful of Frags is doomed. Sadly, my post is more meant for people who want to develop western shooters. Not arguments about nothing other than petty squabbles. But I am here if pettiness is what you desire. I write novels on this subject because I'm very passionate, unlike you fellows, on the future of video games and the lack of Western first-person shooters. I do apologize for caring. I didn't know I was so terrible for it. And when I was invited to this Discord, I thought I would be talking to people with passion in their hearts. I was told this was an important place to discuss on matters as such. 
If not, then I will take my leave and leave you guys to enjoy chatting about generally anything you wish to hear. I am sorry for interrupting your conversations on bullshitting and hate. I see my kind is indeed not nor ever welcomed in this area. But in my defense, I was told this was a group chat with some people who wanted to get something done. I had no idea this was a place of friends mindlessly talking about anything their hearts desire and only what their hearts desire. I am sorry for caring for others and to what they have to say. Just because it is the internet does not mean you are not people to be taken seriously. Goodbye, all of you. It was actually a pleasure to know you. I'm sorry it was not the thing for you. Rip. What a strange dude. Alright, and that's the end of him. That's the last time we ever saw of Zara 2. Let's look at the other dude. Blitzkrieg. I don't know much about this guy. He's somewhat of a newbie. He's only been playing the game for like a year or so. But somehow he's the big admin in the community of Discord now, so whatever. He's more secretive than Zora. He's less willing to disclose stuff like his location, or his uh, semen ingestion habits, or his husband -o. But he's a similarly talkative and attention-loving dude. Blitzkrieg angle isn't so much about being a champion of justice, but rather a high-tier patrician intellect who knows a lot about Maths. He uh, made a maths channel in the Discord to talk about maths. After a little bit of this, I called him out on being a gay bitch and how him flexing his epic maths knowledge on us lowly plebeians was not constructive to the conversation. He got upset and he wrote a diss paragraph about me. Um, it was good, but it wasn't as good as another diss that happened a while back. Let us, let us reminisce a little bit and think about Young Peen. Talking about my sick, the nasty bomb bashes, master blasted, getting his ass white fashion, and cactus toilet paper and rashes. Hunters on the fucking saber, see you later. Quake like the snake in your skate boots, 10 pain for can't shoot. This is you getting irate, you commentate like a block of slate. This is your fate, you run 10 tons past me, you get your Aussie rum kicked back to Sydney. Make him crisscross applesauce, piss in his pants, sip the whiskey, trying to disc me. Like, like always, you'll miss me. Sissy, you hit like Missy Elliott, jumping around, nowhere to be found. Your, your shot, shot wants to stay down. down. I'm pounding out heat. From the back of the street Keep beating all the others I know they not nothing like me I'll make all that pound sound Your gold eagle is my, my crown From wild town of style clown So chin, chin up and bow down This is a democracy now No, it's still totalitarianism But with some democracy elements Keep talking like that Then I'll find a way to remove you from your position Yeah, since this is democracy Why don't we impeach Bridge Street? That sounds fun See, eggs Not sure what impeach means Unnerved Like a person who should eat more I think the word you're looking for is impeached. Oh, I eat plenty. Starving boy. Etymologically, it derives from peach, i.e. a lack of peaches. No food. That's plausible. How does that make any sense? I like peaches. Chich founded it. You rule over it. I see. Just another attempt of spreading propaganda that I'm an evil dictator. I've popped pills, raved to Indian pony remixes, and bought merch. Now it's time to get some pause furry loads in my boy pussy. That last one was me, I've got to be honest with you. I'm glad to see that the Fistful of Phrase community is alive, active, and jolly. Great fun for all can be had in there, a lovely inclusive space for us to discuss our favourite game Fistful of Frags. Alright, that's all I wanted to talk about, my friends. Fuff was good and then it was bad. I was meaning to put a conclusion here, but like, what the fuck am I supposed to say, right? Either you know this stuff already, or you've just been introduced to the world of yet another sad story of obscure video games history. I don't know if it's a game that'll ever become enjoyable enough for me again that I'll actually want to come and play it regularly and have fun like I used to, but the memories are there, man. It's good. It's good shit. So I don't want to leave you with this boring ass conclusion, so to finish this all up, I've got one last Frag Clips compilation for you. Most of it is recycled old content, but fuck you, I'm not playing the new first of Frags to try and scour for a Frag movie content. So it's a best of compilation, alright? Enjoy. Oh, 
smart nigga, smart nigga, no outfit up. Me go off, girl, say me starting to laugh. I me and me girl, I'm gonna play a game my job. Say me girl, go for me, girl, then go play me, girl, the wall. Stung, 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 I'm gonna play my job. I'm say on your way up, I'm gonna say on your way down. So much for this, I wanna add it up, feel it down. You skin it to the black, me say you skin it to the brown. We really wanna add it up, I'm gonna play it down. Thanks for watching, faggot.